This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. My name is Rick Renner and I'm in the ancient city of Pergamum. You say, where in the world are you sitting? I'm sitting inside the underground compartments which were under the great altar of Zeus. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world, a magnificent altar because of its sculpture and its architecture, but spiritually it was a very dark place. In fact, it may have been the darkest place in all of Asia because it was the altar of Zeus, which Jesus refers to in Revelation chapter 2, verse 13, but Jesus calls it Satan's seat or Satan's throne. This was a place of deep, dark spiritual power, concentrated power of Satan, so concentrated that Jesus called it Satan's seat. But it wasn't just true of this location. It was true of all of Upper Pergamum and Middle Pergamum and Lower Pergamum. This was just a dark spiritual city where believers also lived. And they had to learn how to live in this environment. They couldn't escape it. It was their home. It's where they lived. It's where God called them to establish the church. And they had to learn how to live in this environment. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 8, if we will resist the devil, he will flee from us. Sometimes you've got to really resist him. You've got to put up a fight. The believers who lived in this city learned how to resist the devil. They learned how to resist evil. And just like the Bible promises, the devil fled. Today, I'm sitting in the ruins of a formerly evil place. It's not here anymore. It was destroyed and the gospel and the church prevailed for centuries until the city was altogether abandoned. It shows the gospel always is the prevailing force. If you will resist the devil, you can be absolutely sure he will flee from you. And today, I want to tell you about how you can resist the devil in your life. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. As I told you in the introduction of the program today, we're going to discuss how to resist the devil. Well, before you can resist him, first of all, you have to recognize that it's the devil talking to you. And sometimes the devil disguises his voice. For example, when the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness, the devil even quoted scripture. And sometimes the devil disguises his voice to sound very spiritual, very religious. He tries to sound like the voice of God. Or sometimes the devil tries to sound like the voice of reason and logic. You have to be able to discern when the devil is talking to you. And when you finally recognize it, you can stop it. You can resist it. And that's what I'm going to help you with today. And it's going to be great. So stay with me all the way to the end. But I want to remind you that right now we're offering my series called Resisting the Enemy. This is such a powerful series, a two-part series about how to recognize the work of the devil. We go into Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, where we see how Satan's power is aligned, how it's arranged against us, and what we need to do to resist it. The devil's a defeated foe, but we need to know how to reinforce his defeat. And that's what this series is about. And I want to encourage you to order it. I believe it will make a difference in your life. And when you order it, be sure to give us your prayer request. If you don't order it, give us your prayer request. We believe in prayer. We are people of prayer. And if you contact us, I guarantee you, our team will immediately begin to pray for you. And please tell me what you think of the program. I would love to hear from you. Your words mean so much to me. But today we're going to begin in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and then we're going to go to verse 9, and then we're going to jump over to John chapter 10. So get your Bible, open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, where Peter is writing and he says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then in verse 9, he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. But I want us to begin in verse 8, where Peter says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Notice he says, be vigilant. The word vigilant is a Greek word, Gregorio. It was a word used primarily when someone was in danger of being attacked by an enemy. It meant be on your guard, be alert, be aware. 
Here it's translated, be vigilant. I like the word vigilant because it tells us we have to be vigilant. The devil is trying to find a way to get into our lives. He's looking for some way to access us, and therefore we have to be on our alert. We have to be on guard. We have to be vigilant. There is a real enemy out there who wants to penetrate our lives, our minds, our health, our family, our business. He's looking for some way to access us. And therefore, Peter says, you have to be vigilant. Be aware, be alert, be on your guard, be vigilant. It takes vigilance to guard against the attacks of the devil. And then he continues to say, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And in this verse, Peter describes the devil as an adversary. The word adversary is the Greek word anti -dikos. It's really the word for a prosecutor. Your adversary, the Greek could be translated your prosecutor. The word anti means against. The word dikas is the word for righteousness, but it's one who normally would come with the power of the law to prosecute. And here we find the devil comes in a very sly way. He comes like a lawyer. He comes like a prosecutor. He's very sly in the way that he speaks to us and the way he tries to bring charges against us. He tries to take us down with slander and false accusations. Very often he tries to prosecute us with information that he knows about us. For example, if you have a struggle in your life that you're trying to overcome, the devil will bring that up to you. The devil will try to prosecute you with what he knows about you. And when the devil tries to prosecute you with what he knows about you, that's your moment to say, devil, that may have been true of me in the past. That's not true of me now. That's covered by the blood of Jesus. But he'll try to prosecute you with what he knows about your past actions or with what you're struggling with right now. For example, maybe you're praying. You're praying for God to do something in your life and the devil will begin to prosecute you like an adversary. He will say, why should God do that in your life when you know you're doing this and struggling with this in your personal life? Why would you think God would bless you in such a magnificent way when you don't even have victory in this small area of your life? He'll try to prosecute you or take you down with information that he knows about you. And Peter goes on to call him the devil, your adversary, the devil. The word devil is a Greek word diabolos. The word dia carries the idea of penetration. The word balos means to throw or to hurl. And when you compound the two words together, it forms the word diabolos, translated as the word devil. It's really not a name. It's a job description. It describes how the devil operates. Dia balos. He strikes and strikes and strikes and strikes. That's the word balos. And his intention is dia to penetrate, to break all the way through. The devil's intention is to strike us with lies, with allegations, with false information, striking us again and again and again and again until finally, dear, he penetrates our mind. And the devil knows if he can penetrate our mind and affect the way we think and the way that we believe, then he can take us down. He knows if he can control the mind and control our emotions, then he has us. So he comes to strike again and again and again. And that is why Peter says we have to be vigilant. The Greek word Gregorio, be on your guard, be on your alert, be vigilant because the prosecutor, the devil, the one who comes and strikes us again and again and again, walks about, Peter says, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now the Bible says he's seeking whom he may devour. That means everyone is not devourable. Some people cannot be devoured. So the devil is seeking whom he can devour. And Peter uses the example of a lion. Well, if you look in the wild, in nature, who do lions look for? Lions look for animals that are stragglers. They're off by themselves. They're away from the pack. They have no defense. They're not surrounded with any other animals. And that's who the devil is looking for. He's looking for believers that are off to themselves, Believers that are not strong in the word. He's looking for stragglers in faith. 
That's who he's looking for because those people are the very easiest to devour. Now today, toward the end of the program, I'm going to give you seven things you can do to strengthen yourself, to reinforce yourself so you're not a straggler, so you're not one whom the devil can devour. But what does that mean when the Bible says he's seeking whom he may devour? Well, when you hear that word devour, you think of an animal eating the carcass of another animal. But in fact, it's the Greek word pino. And the word devour, the Greek word pino, does not mean to devour. It means to drink or to slurp, which means the objective of the devil is not just to attack you, not just to victimize you, not just to maul you. His intention is to so totally consume you and devour your life that in the end, Pino, he's slurping up the liquid that remains. In other words, his objection is to so devour you that there's no meat left. All there's left is blood, and he's now slurping up the chemicals. He's slurping up the liquid that remains of you. It's to completely devour and to slurp up. That is a literal translation. So Peter now tells us in verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith. We're going to come back to this in just a moment. But the word steadfast is a Greek word, stereos, which means to bolster yourself or to reinforce yourself. To bolster yourself or to reinforce yourself. So now we see in verse 8, Peter says, knowing that the enemy is there, you need to be Gregory. You need to be vigilant, on your alert, on your guard. You need to be vigilant because the enemy is trying to find a way to get in. Then he tells us when the enemy comes, he comes like a prosecutor. He comes with facts, information, which he may twist to use against you, trying to prosecute you, charge you, and bring you down. He tells us that he is a devil. He doesn't just strike once, then leave, but he strikes and strikes and strikes and strikes with the intention to penetrate our mind, to penetrate our emotions. Then he tells us that the devil's walking about looking for the straggler, the one that he can devour. And his intention is to slurp him up. And now that's why Peter says in verse 9, you've got to bolster yourself. You've got to reinforce yourself. You've got to be steadfast in the faith. Now, I want to talk to you about how the devil disguises his voice. And I want you to go to John <clears throat> chapter 10 and verse 10, a very familiar verse where Jesus is talking about what he brings. And he's talking about what the devil brings. And in John chapter 10, verse 10 Jesus says, listen clearly, you've heard this verse a jillion times, but today you're going to get a brand new take on this verse. John 10 verse 10 says, the thief cometh not, but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. Then Jesus says, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But look at the first of the verse. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. We quote this verse all the time, but one day I decided to really dig deep into this verse to find out what all these words meant. And I was quite shocked because the meaning of the Greek words is substantially different than what we have in the King James Version. For example, when you see the word steal, you just think of somebody stealing. When you see the word kill, you think of slaughter, something grisly, something horrible. The word destroy, well, we're not even sure what that means. This seems to mean to destroy. What do these words really mean? And I'm going to give them to, to you today from the Greek, and I'm going to read directly from my notes, and I'm going to give you an RIV translation of this verse. And I believe this is going to really open this verse for you. And you're going to find out today how the devil as a prosecutor comes, very often disguising his voice, twisting the facts, trying to penetrate you, to take you down, and sometimes even trying to camouflage himself to sound like God is talking to you. Listen to what it means. First of all, Jesus says the thief. The word thief is a Greek word, kleptes. I'm going to read to you directly from my notes. It describes a bandit, a thief, or a scam artist. A bandit, a thief, or a scam artist. So you could literally translate it, the thief cometh, or the scam artist comes. The first thing this tells us is the devil is very sly in the way that he steals. He is a scam artist. Secondly, Jesus says he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The word steal is the Greek word klepto. Klepto. You hear another word? How about the word kleptomaniac? That's 
where we get the word kleptomaniac, from this word steal, the Greek word klepto, which describes one so artful in the way he steals that his exploits of thievery are nearly undetectable. I'm going to say that again. One so artful in the way that he steals that his exploits of thievery are nearly undetectable. It is the same Greek word for a pickpocket, and it is where we get the word kleptomaniac. So now we find just like a kleptomaniac, one who can't resist stealing. Everything in his character is bent on stealing. He's just a thief. He's a scam artist. His desire is to wiggle his way into your life and get out of your pocket what belongs to you and take it to himself. He's just a scam artist. He is a kleptomaniac. He can't help it. It's just his nature. He's a pickpocket. He's a thief, which means when Jesus said the devil comes to steal, it means the devil is bent on taking whatever belongs to you. He doesn't even care that it's you. He's just after anything that you have. He's after your family. He's after your house. He's after your checkbook. He's after your credit cards. He's after your job. He just wants anything you have because he is a kleptomaniac. That's what Jesus tells us about the devil in John 10 verse 10. Then Jesus says he comes to kill. What does that word kill mean? Well, I always thought it just meant to slaughter. It carried the idea of something grisly or carnage. It's not what the Greek word is at all. Wow, I was so shocked about this. Hang on. It's the Greek word thuo. The word thuo, anybody who reads Greek can tell you, is the word for a sacrifice. A sacrifice. It's not killing as in murder, but it means to sacrifice. It is the idea of sacrificing or surrendering something that is precious and dear. So here's what happens. The devil comes. First of all, he comes to steal. That's his objective. He is after whatever you have. You just need to know that. This is why you need to be vigilant. The devil's after everything that you have. All of it. He wants your joy. He wants your peace. He wants your money, wants your health, wants your house, wants your car. The devil wants anything that you have. He's after it all. You need to be vigilant. You're dealing with a real kleptomaniac. And then Jesus says he comes to kill the Greek word thuo, which means to sacrifice or to give up something precious and dear, which means if the devil hasn't already wiggled his way into all your possessions and robbed you blind, then he'll go to the next level. And the next level is to try to talk you into believing that you need to sacrifice what's left. He's already nearly robbed you blind. You don't have much left. And here you are. You don't know what to do. You're trying to believe about how to pay your bills and what to do with your finances, how to salvage what hasn't been taken already. And then the devil comes along and religiously begins to talk to you, the Greek word thuo, which describes a religious sacrifice, and disguising his voice, maybe to sound like God or like reason or like logic, he tries to talk you into believing, you know what? You just need to sacrifice everything else. Just give it up. It's not salvageable. You can't save it. You can't redeem it. You just need to walk away from it. He wants you to just yield it all, to sacrifice it, everything that you hold precious and dear. Then, it says he comes to destroy. The word destroy, the Greek word apolumi. The word apolumi means to undo or to ruin, waste, trash, devastate, or destroy. And when you put all these Greek words together, I'm going to give you a new translation of this verse, a contemporary RIV translation. Listen to this. Listen to this. The thief wants to get his hands into every good thing in your life. In fact, this pickpocket is looking for any opportunity to wiggle his way so deeply into your personal affairs that he can walk off with everything you hold precious and dear. And that's not all. When he's finished stealing all your goods and possessions, he'll take his plan to rob you blind to the next level by creating conditions and situations so horrible that you'll see no way to solve the problem except to sacrifice everything that remains from his previous attacks. The goal of this thief is to totally lay you waste and devastate your life. If nothing stops him, he'll leave you insolvent, flat broke, cleaned out in every area of your life. 
You'll end up feeling as if you're finished and out of business. Make no mistake, the enemy's ultimate aim is to obliterate you. (laughs) Now, I told you, you were going to get a brand new version of John 10, verse 10. This is not just stealing, killing, and destroying. This is a pickpocket, a scam artist who's come to wiggle his way into all your personal affairs, take everything that you have, and if he didn't get it all, then he wants to convince you in your head that you need to sacrifice what's left. There's no way you can save it. And his ultimate intention is to leave you flat broke in every area of your life. His goal is to totally obliterate you. That's what Jesus said. Now, let's jump back to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, where Peter tells us, whom resist steadfast in the faith. The word resist is the Greek word antistemi. It's a compound of two words, the word anti, which means against, and the word stemi, which means to stand. When you compound the two words together, it forms the Greek word antistemi. And again, I'm reading directly from my notes. Antistemi means to resist, to arrange oneself against, to strategically oppose, or it describes an orderly and planned resistance. So when Peter tells us that we are to resist the devil, it doesn't mean haphazardly resist. It describes an orderly and planned resistance. You've got to be very orderly about this, very planned. You've got to build a defense. And that's why he continues to say, whom resists steadfast, the Greek word, for steadfast is a Greek word stereos, which means to bolster or to reinforce. Well, how do you reinforce yourself against the voice of the devil? What can you do to make yourself strong? And very quickly, I'm going to give you seven things. Number one, every day spend time with God in the morning, every day. Number two, every day spend time feeding your spirit on the Bible and other sources. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, the Apostle Paul was reading the Bible, and he also asked for the other books. He was using all kinds of things to reinforce himself spiritually. Number three, every day spend some amount of time in quietness. We read about this in Psalm 27, verse 19, where the Bible talks to us about the power of personal reflection. We need to stay in touch with our heart, our mind, our emotions, make sure we're clear. Number four, every day, Spend some amount of time with those who strengthen you. Hebrews 10 and verse 25 tells us that we need fellowship with strong believers. Other believers give us strength. Number five, every day take time throughout your day to acknowledge God. We read about this in Psalm 119 verses 164 to 165 where David says seven times a day I'm going to stop to acknowledge God. It's good for you to create pauses throughout your day, every day, to stop and say, Lord, I recognize your presence. I recognize you're really Lord over everything that I'm facing in my life. Bring his presence into your life. By recognizing him, this will strengthen you and reinforce you. Number six, every day say no to the things you're not supposed to do. If you keep saying yes to things you're not supposed to do, they are a distraction that will get you off track. And in James chapter five, verse 12, The Bible tells us we need to learn to say no. And then finally, every day pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit anew. And we read about this in Ephesians 5, verse 18. The Bible says, continually be filled with the Spirit. If you will do these practical seven things every single day, guess what? It will reinforce you. It will bolster you so that you'll be able to wage an attack against the enemy. You'll be able to resist him. Again, the word resist, antistemy, which means a planned and orderly resistance. You need to put together a plan about what you're going to do to strengthen yourself, to bolster yourself, so that you can be reinforced against the voice of the enemy. You can overcome anything the enemy says to you, but you have to be able to recognize his voice, and you have to know how to resist him. And that's what we've been talking about today. I hope you got something new from the program today, especially from John chapter 10, verse 10. What an amazing new take that is on that verse. If you need to hear it again, go back to the archives. That is an amazing verse, but we're out of time. I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Do you feel you're in a fight for your life? Is the enemy attacking your mind with depression, fear, or temptation? 
As a Christian, you don't have to accept it. You can overcome and resist the enemy. In our spiritual battle, the fight is not entirely against flesh and blood, but also against unseen spiritual forces. Regardless of what you are facing, Christ has already given you the power and authority to defeat the enemy every day. In the two-part CD series, Resisting the Enemy, Rick explains how you can defeat the attacks that the kingdom of darkness tries to wage against your mind. With God-given weapons and the knowledge of how to use them, you can win the battle for your mind. When you call or go online in order resisting the enemy, you'll learn how the devil continuously bombards your mind in order to dominate your life. But you can overcome by learning how to enforce our victory over Satan by submitting to God and resisting the enemy. When you choose to believe God and commit to his word by resisting the lies of the devil, you can and will see your circumstances change. When you call or go online today, you'll also receive the companion book, Spiritual Weapons to Defeat the Enemy. This book gives you a fresh understanding of the armor of God, the spiritual weapons of war, and how you can defeat every lie of the devil and live in victory every day. Don't miss this special offer, Resisting the Enemy and the Companion Companion book, Spiritual Weapons to Defeat the Enemy. Call now or go to renner.org to order. We saw today that the devil is a scam artist. He is a pickpocket. He is a kleptomaniac. It's in his nature to steal. And what does he want to steal? Everything you've got. He wants your family. He wants your kids. The devil wants your kids. He wants your grandkids. The devil wants your car. The devil wants your joy. He wants your peace. He wants your relationships. The devil wants your job. Really doesn't matter what you have. You see, he's a kleptomaniac. It's just in his nature to steal. He wants whatever you've got. So you have to know how to resist him. And that's what the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and verse 9, that we're to be vigilant, we're to resist him, and we're to be very planned and very orderly in our resistance of him. This is too serious for you not to put a lot of thought into this. The devil is serious, and that's why Peter tells us to be vigilant in our resistance of him. You need to be resistant. And by the way, if you're dealing with an attack, if you feel like the scam artist is after you, and you need somebody to pray for you, call us. We'll pray for you. And I want to remind you that right now we're offering my series called Resisting the Enemy, powerful series. The back of the series says resistance plus persistence equals victory every time. If you know how to resist the enemy, if you know how, he really will flee from you. Get this series. It'll make a difference for you. But I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for this time in the Word of God. And I thank you that you have given us the power and authority to resist every onslaught of the enemy. We thank you the devil flees when we resist. We thank you that you've given us minds and you've given us the Holy Spirit and divine common sense to know how to put up a planned and orderly resistance. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me. Remember Ecclesiastes 8, 4. It says, where the word of a king is, there's power. Let the word of God release its power in you today. And I'll see you in the next program. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.